welcome back to the Triforce Podcast, episode six, I think. Yep. How are you guys doing, PFLAX and Six? What's up? Doing good. What's up? Doing good. I thought that was a that was a poor intro. I mean, it was. I did, I, oh. It lacked the the verve, the pizzazz. Have the you just brio. woken up or something? Like, what's what's up? Yeah, I've you've just woken up. I'm here. You just... spent. You were up all night watching anime, and you only got like three <laughs> hours of sleep. <laughs> I found a really big Reddit thread that was saying like, "You have to watch this anime. Trust me, it's amazing." And you were like, "Oh shit, I need to broaden my mind and yeah, stuff." Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And uh, in fact. I greatly enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone who supported us after that thread and conversation. Oh, shit. Fuck. Well, let's just start again. This is a mess. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you can't do that. This is a mess. No, we're like, we're fully committed now. We're in. There is no start There's again. There's no start again. Oh, shit. We're already rolling. Normally, one of the things that happens in my recordings is... If we ever do re-record stuff, it's usually the start, right? Yeah. The start of stuff always goes wrong, and we're like, oh. And then we do it again, and then it's, like, much, much peppier. Okay, so but my, my flex, if you want to do another intro... My big play at the start of a recording... What? I don't know if you've noticed this, like, over the years, is I try to, like, knock you off kilter as much as possible to, like, set a tone <laughs> for the rest of the recording. I have those. So, like, I'll do, I'll do anything I can yeah. to troll you at it the start of a recording. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring up, I'll rake up any old shit, basically, just to like really throw you off mm. and and make you feel vulnerable. He's like he's like Inigo Montoya in uh, in Princess Bride. That's you know, right. You got to watch your footwork. You got to watch your terrain. He he's the guy. That's right. That when he's when he's when he's about to start the duel, he's he's gonna talk some shit. Yeah. Hey, nice shoes, idiot. When you get him the toilet store, and yeah. then while he's circling around you, you're gonna back up onto some gravel, and then you've got the loose footing under the gravel. He's like, yeah, you're yeah, on the yeah. gravel now. That's that's it. Sips is like a fence. And all the while. It's because you killed my father, prepared to die. Exactly. <laughs> so let's have a little catch up on what you guys be doing this week. Okay. What have you guys been doing this Man, week? Man, it's a good question. I've had a really angry week. Uh, I have some bad news to report to you guys. Oh, no, no. My what car is, it? is at the shop. <gasps> yeah. Oh. Yeah. It was pretty bad. I was driving my son somewhere. Okay. And uh, we were almost there. We were getting close. We were like pretty, pretty close. And then all of a sudden, like the fucking clutch felt funny. Like, it, like I heard like this noise and it just, it felt like a bit loose or like it didn't feel right. Yeah. So I was like, shit. So I stopped the car and it stalled. So I pulled up the handbrake and I was like kind of stressing a bit. I was in the middle of the road, turned the car back on thinking like maybe it's just a little hiccup or whatever. <laughs> it's like a computer. Yeah. You just turn it up. <laughs> Tried to put the car into gear. It's and a it, Windows update. And it wouldn't. Yeah. And my son was like, why did we stop? And I was like, oh, I, I think the car is broken. He's like, the car's not broken. So he's sitting in the back seat in his fucking kid's seat laughing the whole time. Like he thinks that this is <laughs> hilarious, right? That I keep stopping and starting the car. I'm like furiously trying to get the car into gear and he thinks that's really funny because my arm is moving all fast and stuff. And I'm like, it's not funny. The car's <laughs> broken. Like I have to push this now. So I had to stop the that's car. That's the thing though. I think that would be really funny though. That's the thing. That's the, the way that I've seen you and your son interact is that you have all this kind of false anger all the time. And that's that's very, very funny. So now what he's seeing is real anger, but he can't tell the difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he just thinks I'm joking around. So then... So then I get, I fucking take the handbrake off. I get out of the car uh, with the door open and the window open and I'm fucking pushing the car down the road, okay? And I have to push the car and parallel park it because of where we were, oh. which was a nightmare. And of course, he's sitting in the car laughing his fucking head off the whole time. He just thinks it's the funniest thing. He's like, Dad, you're so strong. Like, how can you push the car? I'm like, fuck, I'm trying to fucking push the car here. Like, trying to, like, get it off the road. Some guy pulled up behind and, like, his wife was like, hey, do you guys need a hand? Or I was like, fuck, how are you going to help me? And then, like, this fucking gigantic brick shithouse of a man gets out of the passenger seat. He's like, let me just push this with my pinky finger. And he just fucking <laughs> parallel parked it in one go. So then I was like saying to my son, like, you know, look, he's not all that, okay? Like, he obviously works out and stuff. And he's got more time, okay? He probably doesn't have kids. He's got more time. He's bigger. He's bigger and he can do this stuff. So, so then I had to fucking park it up, okay? Big guy parked it up for me. And I said thanks and everything. And then when he went away, I was like, you fucking pussy, like under my breath sort of thing. So he couldn't hear me. My son thought that was pretty funny. Had to phone a tow truck. Tow truck had to come up. 
take the car down and take me with it. We had to go down to the shop and then they lent me a car. Yeah. They lent me a car that is plastered in advertising for this used fucking car. God. So like, I feel like a clown on the road now for like a week. <laughs> I've got this fucking advertising clown car that I have to drive around everywhere. And to make things worse, like my son thought that this was very funny and everything. And then when we got to where we were going, he was like, oh, great, we're here now. So like, I'm fucking done, whatever. I was like, don't you want to see the tow truck? Like how often have you seen a tow truck before? It's actually going to like put the car on the back of a truck and take it off. Like, nah, I don't care about that. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just fucking pushed the car and everything. You don't want to see the tow truck? What the hell? So then I was really disappointed. My whole week basically has been spent thinking about and doing things with the car. Uh, and it's been pretty stressful. Wow. But, you know, at the same time, you live and you learn. And, you know, I felt like my soul replenished a bit through doing that as well, because it was probably the first time in a long time that I actually spent a lot of time doing something that wasn't playing Rust. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. I remember one of the things that you said to me on Jersey was, this car's a shit heap. I hate it, but I'm just going to use it until it breaks. Yeah. And I guess literally about a week later. It broke, yeah. It broke horribly. But so having said that, it is in the shop and we are getting it fixed because it's still cheaper to get it fixed than it is to get something else. Yeah. So like if we can get like another year or two out of it, great. The thing is like, I wouldn't mind getting a new car or like a, a newer secondhand car, but with little kids, your car gets hammered. Like our car's a mess. Like there's crap everywhere. There's like puke stains and like shit stains all over it and stuff. And like, I think yeah. if I'm going to get a new car, like I want them to at least be old enough not to poop in the car sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So like, there's that too. Shit stains. I got to think about Duncan, that kind of oh stuff. man, that reminds me of a story. I, this is one of Duncan's stories, but I can I can tell it. Okay. Because he, he will never tell it. Right. It's like, so Duncan always goes to Glastonbury, right? One of the things that you see in Glastonbury is you go to the toilets and you're like, oh my God, how is there, how is this so bad? How did someone manage to shit on the ceiling? It's so okay. bad. Do you, yeah, I don't yeah. know about you guys, but you notice every time you go into one of those toilets, it's always really hot outside. Yeah. And the heat outside makes it smell even worse. Oh, it's, it's the like, worst. It makes the whole experience Awful. It is horrid. I feel like if it, if you went into one of those on a cold day, it would be better. Yeah. Like it wouldn't smell as bad. You wouldn't feel like you just stepped into some private like hell cubicle or whatever. Like it would just be okay. Wouldn't be ideal, but I okay. I think they've changed it a little bit now, and they've they've of course the toilets have had such a bad rap for so long at Glastonbury. I think they've they've done their best to try and make them less terrible. So I think last time didn't they have these big kind of like you'd, you'd like get a tin can full of dirt with you, and then you'd like go into the place you you like poop in a hole, and then you put your tin of dirt in after you or something. They had some super organic like, kind of. That you get, you have to go into a yurt, man, and then like an old woman would knit you a fucking yard, <laughs> some, some toilet, toilet paper, paper. <laughs> <laughs> some four ply. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It'd be like strange. Anyway, uh, Duncan. So Duncan said. Um, so this one time, I was having mushrooms. Someone gave me some magic mushrooms or something. I, and look, I'm paraphrasing the story. Okay, this is just how I remember it. Yeah. And uh, basically, he ended up getting really, really bad um, tummy ache from the mushrooms and feeling very sick. And he was uh, both sort of pooping and puking projectile from both ends and he found out how shit got on the ceiling it was fucking him wow it was duncan wait how though like what because was his ass up in the air because he's in the toilet and shitting at the same time in, in one of those fucking like porta john toilets yes he actually put imagine? his mouth close to the hole like <laughs> i mean exactly i would have just gone outside to puke honestly well, no, like, but you can't there's people I, everywhere i would not I would not do anything in there that I didn't need to do. Puking, you I, can do anywhere. Exactly. If I was in that situation, I would I would just kill myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> that is about as close to hell as I could Even possibly imagine. Even just hearing imagine. the story, I feel like I want to kill myself, like let alone having oh, to live through it. a great story. So the, so the action of barfing caused an involuntary squirt of poop to leave his <laughs> oh, exposed ass. Oh. Yeah, why is he pulling his trousers <laughs> yeah. down? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to understand this. Why is he not wearing pants at this point? Like, why is his bare ass sticking he's up in the air? He's high as a fucking kite. He's like, he's woohoo! He he's thinks away he's with like, it. you know, I don't know, like on a flying dragon, you know, flying over anime land of, of wonderful body pillows and stuff, you know. You know Please what it's like. Don't, don't, don't say the A word. Man, yeah. So what have you been doing this week? Flax. Uh, let me see. Did 
I tell you guys about my car last week? I can't remember. Oh, shit. Did I mention it? You got a car story, too? My clutch also went on my car. Fuck. Well, man, we, are like, fuck? we are like soulmates and we don't even realize I know, realize dude. It. It's fucking but, but crazy. My, mine has a slightly happier ending. Oh, okay. So we're like soulmates, but I'm the one with the good soul and you're the one with the bad soul. Yeah, right? yeah, so I'm just, like the devil one. Dark yeah. soul. Right. Dark soul. The dark soul, right. So I'm driving um, to a wedding with Mrs. F. Okay. And I'm driving along and we're on the M25. We're going about 70 miles an hour, keeping up with traffic. And all of a sudden, the traffic starts to slow down. So I start to slow down. I go to change down to fourth gear. And the clutch is loose as hell. And the gear stick is just like rigid. So I'm like, holy shit. So I like jam it and it goes into neutral. So now I'm in neutral on the M25 and I can't get back into gear. So we're like, you guys there? Yeah. Okay. We're just gripped I mean, by I the... Um... <laughs> so, okay, sorry. I thought I'd disconnect from Discord for a second. <laughs> so, there was no reaction. It was like, I mean, either you're on tenterhooks or, or I'm just talking of thin air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. We, it was gripping. Hey, Lewis, can you hear Perian? I... I haven't been able to hear him for like I'm going to carry minutes. on with the story, Sibs, all right? Shut the fuck okay, up. Okay, yeah, keep going. Yeah. So I'm in, I'm in, like, I'm not in the fast lane. I'm in the next lane to that, whatever they call that lane, the, the pussy lane. And I'm just cruising along and I'm sort of like, holy shit. I'm like, love, I can't put the fucking car in gear. And it starts to feel like heavy. And I'm like, is the car dying on me? Like, what's happening? Shit. I'm traveling fast and there's cars and trucks all around us. I'm never going to be able to pull over to the side. I'm like, holy shit. And then I just like pump in the clutch like crazy, slam it back into fourth gear and it was okay. And she was like, should we pull over? Should we pull over? And I'm just like, nah, it'll probably be fine. Right? <laughs> as long as we never leave fourth gear, yeah. we'll be I was fine. Like, we're just going to have to stay in fourth or fifth and just try not to change gear. Like we just <laughs> plot a route that requires us to not slow down and we'll at least get to the wedding and then we'll worry about this later, right? Because nice. we were just going to make the wedding, like the way we'd planned it, but with the way traffic was, we were going to make it with about 10 minutes to spare. No time to fuck around. So we're just it so I'm like keeping it steady like anytime there's cars like way up in front I'm like I'm just changing lanes so I don't have to slow down and everything so we get there and we get back no problem and then whoa whoa whoa, I, whoa, 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 whoa what do you mean you get there and you get back no problem you've driven the entire wedding in fourth gear and back I got I got there well after that it, it was it was intermittent so it was like sometimes it would stop working I'd be like alright fuck so I'm like I, all that happens is all that you'll see is when I'm changing gear the car starts rocking back and forth because yeah. I'm pumping this clutch like I'm trying to put out a fire with my foot right it's just like slamming it trying to slam the stick in gear so we, we made it better i take it to the garage and the guy's like go oh, right yeah we'll have a look i've always taken my cars he's a really really good garage but the guy always seems like he couldn't give a shit right. he's, he just acts that way but he's actually a really good mechanic i think that that's like a like a garage thing though yeah yeah they do, they, they do that like i think that they do it on purpose too so like because they really like their jobs but they don't want people to know that it's a cool job and stuff like <laughs> yeah. they don't want competition they don't want like new people turning up or whatever like yeah they're, like massive xenophobes so they're just yeah. like yeah fuck this job you know like, yeah whatever i think he, so he was like yeah we'll have a look at it just uh, park it out front i was like all right your, um, so mechanic no gallagher by the way no he's from manchester <laughs> isn't he right all right mate yeah <laughs> no manchester <laughs> So I, I, he, I, he calls me on the Friday. He's like, all right, the car's ready. You can come in and have a look at it. I was like, I okay. I can't imagine him not looking like Noel Gallagher now. <laughs> like. So I go in and he says, uh, well, it wasn't the clutch. And I was like, oh, my fucking God. He's going to say, uh, Jeez. you know, your trans some axle partners decoupled from the stabilizing grip unit. And that's a five grand job or something. But instead he goes, Whoa. he says, luckily... It was just a slave wheel nut pincher had been leaking fluid onto the uh, cremulator. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, well, man, the lucky escape there. I mean, and I went, I, I just nodded and went, Phew. So anyway, listen, Whoa. the car is fixed. I'm going to get my brother to drop it off to you tomorrow. And you wake up in the morning and you look outside and then he's in there sitting in your car going, Shine. <laughs> it's Liam, Liam Gallagher dropping off. That was Liam Gallagher. Oh, we got it. We got it too. But it, it only cost a hundred quid in the end. And it wow. was like, but it was either, it was either the slave drive unit had decoupled from the cremulator and was leaking fluid or new car. Like it was, it was on, it was like a coin What flip. are your thoughts on a new car? Would you buy one? Brand new? Yeah. Fuck no. no Why would anybody either. ever do uh, that? I don't know. Why would you Because that do new that? car smell is really something else, especially if you like splurge out and you get the really nice leather Do you know interior. what else is really good? The smell of money. I don't know. Money. Sometimes money money stinks. My my brother in law bought a bought a brand new VW Golf about ten years ago. Right. It's, it's a nice car. It was beautiful, brand new. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Twenty grand. Whoa. Okay. Twenty thousand pounds for a car. 
Jeez. Now, all right, he used it to drive to and from work, and he was like, I need it to be reliable. I was like, okay. I bought my car six years ago for £2,000, and this was the first time I've ever had to take it to the garage in six years. That's good. I, we were the same. Now, even if I'd had to spend five grand somehow keeping this thing up, I'm still better off than him for spending 20 grand. And when he goes to sell his golf, you know, he got like he got like a fraction of that for it because, of course, he's put like 80,000 miles on it or whatever. And it's not new anymore. Like if you were to buy a brand new car, drive to a secondhand car dealership and sell it right then and there, you'd still get half for what you paid for it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's so fucking stupid. I do not understand it. There are lots of secondhand bargains out well, there. Don't buy brand new cars, kids. Don't do the it. The classic thing is you, you brand new car, you lose sort of like a quarter of its value from driving it off the forecourt, yeah. don't you? Or something like that. That's, yeah. there, there's That's some what they thing say. There. Yeah. Yeah. The minute you sit down and turn on the engine, it's like already worth less than... Than you bought it for the guy takes out your wallet and stamps on it right there yeah <laughs> well the thing is like car dealers and car salesmen and car even the car mechanics kind of have this sort of i don't know like like aura around that they're just trying to scam you and get one over on you in a way right i like, felt like that about frank and richie butcher in eastenders like they they were always trying to scam people <laughs> steal their <laughs> steal their money and stuff like that's such a specific reference i love and it. i thought that those characters were written so well too like uh, all my experiences with car mechanics and stuff i can sort of relate back to that it's show. one of the, it's like, one of the few some, things whoever wrote those knew. characters yeah, they knew, knew what they were yeah they had a lot of experience but it's, one, it's one of those things where you, you might have a sort of you know not day to day but you have regular dealings with these people but your knowledge is zero. Yeah. You know, it's like that old thing. If the car's broken, I, I'll walk out. I'll still pop the hood as if I know what I'm looking for. I'll just look there, yeah. shake my head going, oh, it could be the, uh, the transom foliolator. Yeah, but even the if... The Stevens wheel. Even if you kind of know what you're talking about, they'll still just fucking science their way yeah. out of it somehow. You'll, you'll be like, yeah, well, it's clearly the uh, 3295 underscore copulator, yeah, right? Yeah, but not on, on, the, on the, this model this year, mate. Nah, because you see there was a fault and the 284 bicuspid valves that... Uh, yeah, exactly. There's always some it fucking won't, it reason. It won't marry. It won't marry with the twin folgulators. Yeah, it just and of course you're driving the gear, you know, which is a different yeah. version Big from mistake. the TI. Big mistake. You're basically a yeah, fucking yeah. idiot. You're an idiot. And your mechanic became Australian. Yeah, you're a flying <laughs> idiot, mate. What are you thinking? It's truth. Yeah. Your galunga lunga valve's broken. There's definitely <laughs> something here, right, in that... Um, it's a manly job, okay, being a mechanic. You know, it makes you feel like a man. You're yeah. covered in grease. You're does, fixing yeah. stuff. You're mending stuff. You're hammering things. You're churning, turning a wrench on stuff. You're like chucking out greasy parts. You're ordering new parts in. Sometimes you just got to brute force stuff out of yeah, the car. Yeah, right. you're, the you're car using too. a dirty old crane and pouring like oil and grease all over the place and Grr. flammables. And, and it's, it's kind of, I don't know. Yeah. And, and when you talk to these people who are, have a manly job it, it kind of automatically makes the subject a manly subject right and you don't want to because you're, you're always going to pretend right like pfax said you know even if they say like they could they could just be saying absolute nonsense to you and you'd be like oh yeah 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 obviously i yeah of course i know yeah yeah like because you don't want that challenge to your masculinity right in a way at least at least i think that's i think that the case is with like um many of these things we we are scared to I don't know where I'm going with this. No, 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 no. I, 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 I'm in agreement. I'm nodding. You can't hear it, but imagine me nodding vigorously. Me too. Yeah. It's it's funny. Like like I, I'm automatically super paranoid about car mechanics. Like like there's I've, for example, uh, my old house. I wanted to get some um, solar panels on the roof. Okay. What? Well, I, I don't know. It was a thing. We were go like I was I was I don't know why. Like there was this time when when my parents were like, "Hey, should we get some solar panels?" And I was like, "Sure." So I looked into it. We were basically like, "Sure, let's get some solar panels on the roof. It'll be it'll be great. Loads of people do it. It's like a trendy thing." It's it's become very popular. Yeah, in and years, sadly, so. it's a complete waste of time. But well, yeah, it, it'll take twenty years. Twenty years apparently of using so a solar panel for it to actually pay for itself and to make back. The energy that it costs to make them that has been expended yeah. like it, it's it's such a and until the technology well, I'm not is surprised if you live in england well yeah anyway yeah that's it uh, like one day of actual real sun for you. <laughs> Any, anyway i was we were like fully up for it you know and, and if it was all like an online thing you know and it was like okay pay four grand online or whatever you know all the soda panels some guy will come around and fix them job done you know if that was the process like ordering your broadband we probably would have done it but what they did was they sent around a salesman right who was like, okay, so we're going to install the solar panels on this facing roof. And we're like, that totally put us off, right? As soon as there was a salesman involved, I was like, 
Why, why, why do you need to... a salesman after you guys had already sort of committed to I don't, doing I, it? I guess I don't think he realized like, or whatever. He didn't need to actually sell it at that point. Like, or or was it one of those outfits where it was like, yeah, I'm the salesman, but I'm also the technician and I'm the CEO and I'm also the uh, I think he has to get his Maybe commission. Maybe they can upsell you things. Like you can get solar panels that have a smiley face on them. Or... Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can get them custom. You can get like bling on yep, them. Yep. You can get your name engraved on the side. But have you thought diamonds. about diamond encrusted solar panels? They are all the rage, mate. Yeah. Oh, mate. Yeah. Get diamonds. Diamonds. They twinkle in the sunshine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Twinkle. <laughs> You want to get that extra twinkle on these babies, that's They're for such sure. such cockney words, aren't they? All right, twi- All right twinkle. All right. All right, sunshine. Solar panels, mate. One word for you. Twinkle, yeah? Twinkle. That's how you shift them. <laughs> twinkle. You know twinkle. what they should have run? They should do yeah. a version of his standards where instead of Phil Mitchell running a garage, he sells solar panels. Pat, trying to shift these fucking panels, though. <laughs> <laughs> fucking panels, mate. Yeah. They ain't got no bloody twinkle. Fuck, Where's you, a twinkle? I do, on the topic of EastEnders, I know you guys probably don't watch it. But, like, I, I do, from time to time, catch glimpses of it because my wife watches it. Right. And, like, Phil, over the years, has created children. And I think now, at this point in the show, they're all back yeah. and they're adults. And they're all fucking crazy. Yeah. And Phil almost died from alcohol abuse as well. He also, so I mean, go. IRL, he's like he's like an alcoholic. So he's, Oh, I didn't know that. He's like, but a, in the, he's in like the show. a classic method actor and he's the Brando of EastEnders. But he's also Holy like the fuck. he's also like the Genghis Khan of EastEnders. The since, dude's like, been on it for so, so he's, long. He's had, Holy like, shit. Like he's outlasted everyone. Any time some female interest comes on the show that's meant to be like the hot young thing that's uh, you know, she turns up in the in the square and all the married women looking at her like, who's that bitch? She's not having my man. Phil Mitchell's yeah, yeah. like Phil's just like We'll drooling, fucking, slam that fucking barking like a <laughs> dog at her and stuff from across the room. And somehow they go, oh, yeah. I just can't resist his sweaty red He's face. He's such all. a fat, bad boy. I love <laughs> bad boys. Come here, chubby. He knows all about them panels. Come and Ooh, give me a yeah. big kiss. Them greasy hands. <laughs> He's got greasy. I don't even know if he actually does the car mechanic stuff anymore. Like, I think, like, some of his kids just do it now. But they have their own, like, circle of drama now. So, like, they're fixing cars and it's... Like, oh yeah, did you snog my mate? And they're like, fuck you. And they <laughs> punch each other and yeah. batter each other with wrenches and stuff. Oh, Pretty yeah. typical Eastenders. Man. Pretty dark, but Standard. you know, it's gritty. It's good. It's gritty. It's gritty. It's realistic. It's gritty, realistic, yeah. and good. Gritty. Yeah. It's the least gritty show. And you can actually see the Eastenders River from a plane when you fly over London it's true. for real. It's a real river. That. Folks. It's called the Eastenders River. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> When did you? What, what was it you said about that? Did you tweet about that? No, I think it was a tweet. I think somebody, I think somebody tweeted or retweeted a tweet where somebody's like, "Oh my God, you can actually see the East Enders River on Google Maps." <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's the one. Yeah. Fuck oh me. man, millennials can't live with them. Can't live with yep. them. Yeah. So this week. I've not oh, sorry, really yeah. been doing Oh, sorry, yeah. Lewis, anything. what have you been up oh, to shit, this week? Oh, yeah, Lewis, what did I you... I yeah. have tried to avoid... I've, I've managed to not play any Dota. I've managed to avoid playing too much Rust. You've created a panic room in your apartment that's completely cockroach-free, and you walk around on yeah. toilet paper trails all over your apartment. <laughs> Stuffed <laughs> full of emergency anime titles. Yeah, and just, yeah just to keep you going in case the cockroaches I've come back. I've got some uh, audio books to listen to, oh, nice. and I'll be, I've, been, I've been reading and listening to those. And I've got, I've got a book on Zen, okay? okay. I've been studying... Zen. Okay. Nice. Um, just to add to the whole anime thing. Sure. I thought that it would be good to talk to you a little bit about Zen and maybe give you a little Zen sort of, they call them cones. Okay. They're, they're, they're questions right. that make you, you're supposed to think on and while, while meditating and, and help you to. If this is sure. going to be that sound of one hand clapping, the Simpsons already settled it. It's easy. Man, I got to <laughs> tell you as well, people like turn up at my door every once in a while and try to flog this shit on me and I just close the I door. I can give you face. the sound of one hand clapping. That is actually one of them. It's yeah, a very, no, very listen, famous one. Listen. What? Well, I mean... I, mm. That's the sound of one hand clapping. <laughs> Next! <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, a lot of them aren't necessarily <laughs> questions so much as stories. All right, hit me. Hit me. Go Cone on, me. Okay. Cone me, baby. Cone them. So, Zen Master... Hakuin sure. was praised by his neighbours as one living a pure life. 
Okay. Right. Had solar panels, yeah. all the rest of it. Fucking shit in a can and covered it in dirt. <laughs> Never did mushrooms. Never did mushrooms. Knew a lot a about beautiful... cars. Go on, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking That's all right. Been around the block, alcohol abuse. Brother he of probably did live in a yurt and um, <laughs> yeah. knit his own toilet paper. Nice. A beautiful Japanese girl whose parents owned a food store lived near him. Suddenly, without any warning, her parents discovered she was with child. <sighs> oh, uh oh. This made her parents angry. Impure. She would not confess who the man was, but after much harassment, at last named Hakuin, oh. the poor Zen master. In great anger, the parents went to the master. Is that so? Was all he would say. After the child was born, it was brought to Hakuin. By this time, he had lost his reputation, which did not trouble him, but he took very good care of the child. He obtained milk from his neighbours and everything else the little one needed. A year later, the girl's mother could stand it no longer. She told her parents the truth, that the real father of the child was a young man who worked in the fish market. The mother and father of the girl at once went to Hakuin and asked for his forgiveness and apologised at length to get the child back. Hakuin was willing. He gave up the child, saying, Is that so? Man, fuck that. I'd be like, The child is mine now. (laughs) 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 You ruined your chance. (laughs) I've eaten the baby. I've consumed its soul, and now I will become He Man or something. (laughs) Super Zen Master. (laughs) (laughs) The lightning bolts crackle from his fingertips. So Zen is um, very sort of strange and uh, really hard to kind of describe and explain. I I can't really do it. A lot of these Zen things, like the one hand clapping thing. It's like a really old school shaft like really complicated man but <laughs> do anything he can for like his woman because <laughs> he seems like he's got the best interests of the girl at heart really. and the baby <laughs> yeah i think he's just i think that essentially zen could be summed up as just roll with the punches just fucking yeah the most passive fucking guy in the entire world life's gonna shit on me i'll open my mouth uh, well it, it's not well, okay that's that's well, look, well maybe we'll do one of these a week and you guys can think about it but i don't think there's an art there shouldn't be an answer there shouldn't be something to take away from it straight away you should let that sit with you okay let that story the, the, think about it okay when you're when you're doing something that you consider to be meditating right like yeah. modern meditation is sitting there being bored on the bus right imagine you're on the bus just to, to, to work or school or whatever uh, or you walk in there or whatever but you've forgotten your iphone and you you just want just nothing okay try and let your mind we don't have these moments okay these days right because we're always inundated with noise like when was the last time you were bored two minutes okay, ago there's always right yeah. shut up people i mean the zen thing really <laughs> fucking sent me Do off you know what i mean way. though what really bored really kind of like because when i was a kid you know we had nothing to do yeah. you know my yeah. parents were like well you can't play games anymore so go out and play in the street and we'd be like okay so we were just sat out there in the street or you know sometimes even like on your own just with nothing to do and it's it's peaceful to have that stuff and it's it's mindful to have that stuff and 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 sometimes just turn your phone off one day this week yeah and just take half an hour and think about that story and see just see if you could think about it think around it think about what it means to you and come back to but me what, it, do, it doesn't seem that complicated it doesn't no, it, seem it really like it's doesn't. got any yeah. questions i'm just like it just sounds like zen's trying to avoid stomach ulcers, he's just like which... he just took he was like okay is that like you know? Yeah. All right. Like, okay. Yeah. Well, that I mean, that was that was more of a story. Okay. Do you want an actual? Yeah. Give us some. Give us a mind. Give us a mind bending, tongue twisting. Give me zen something that's going to change that I'll my be life. Like, Whoa. Here you go. This is the first one in the book. Okay. All right. A monk asked Joshu, right. who was a Chinese Zen master, has a dog Buddha nature or not? Okay. And Joshu answered Mu, which is the negative symbol in Chinese, which doesn't mean yes, it doesn't mean no, it means Maybe. nay. It's like the void, right? It's just nothing. Yeah. It means void, yeah. So, does a dog have Buddha nature or not? The master answered, void. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. That's not going right. to get my brain going, I'm going to be honest Why with you. Why not? Because There's a lot to think about It there. sounds like he just doesn't really know what to say, so he's just deflecting. He, he could either be copping it out and going, he could basically yeah. just be quick with going, eh, like that. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like he's doing what I do. Like, you know, when somebody's talking to you and you're on your iPad and you're just like, eh. Uh-huh. Mm. It's like not a yes or a no. It's yeah. just like mm. a, it's a mm. uh, well, Yeah, it's, maybe he was on his iPad. Yeah. Well, you have to think about the question and the answer. I'm thinking about it. Right. I mean, when you say Buddha nature, for one thing, my, my knowledge of Buddha nature is, is a dog chill? Yeah. Or is a dog no chill? I'm going to say, <laughs> you know, it's neither one thing nor the other. Yeah. It's just a dog. I mean, if you if you separate like the good and the bad of a dog into columns, 
they are loyal as long as you have like bacon bits in your pocket. You can train them not to shit in places you don't want them to eventually. It takes a little bit of time and some perseverance, but you can get there. On the negative side though, they'll eat anything. It doesn't matter their what it is. Pu- yeah, yeah. Like I've seen dogs eating their own like shit Poop, and, yeah. and They're puke disgusting. before, which is bad. It's really bad. And also when people say that like, dogs are clean and they let them lick their face they're not no like they eat shit and puke they're dirty as shit they lick their balls really fucking dirty yeah and they're assholes too yeah they'll do that like and they don't even do it privately either no they're just like whenever tv yeah yeah absolutely so there's there's pros and cons to dogs so maybe that's why he was like you know what there's too many variables here i can't give a straight answer and he doesn't want to get a stomach ulcer he doesn't want to commit he doesn't want the pressure well here's the thing right you're not it's difficult for for me to kind of explain this to you because there shouldn't be and isn't a straight answer the answer is different for everyone you're supposed to go into your own mind you're supposed to like think about it you're supposed to spend time thinking about it as well because the longer you spend thinking about this question the more questions it brings up i don't think it does no, I don't, well, no, but I don't you can't think it define does. Buddha nature as chill or no chill. You can't really know what a dog's thinking. You can't, I'm not telling you what the answer is. I'm just telling you it's extreme. It's an extremely complex question. Which so, well, the way Zen works is that the students are given a question like that. They expect they're supposed to spend a day studying it and then come back and tell their answer to the master. And if their master thinks the answer is reasonable, they'll give them another question. But if not, then they'll go and spend another day thinking about All right, it. Right, t- turn turn to the answers page in the book and let me know what the Zen answer is to that question. I'm, well, I'm there, there isn't an answer. Come on, there's got to be one. <laughs> this is the this is the this is the worst quiz book I'm I've so- ever heard. Of. <laughs> this is not a panel show with a with a with a set. Like, it's not a quiz, not a pub quiz. Give us another one. I want a good one. That one sucked. The other one sucked. Give us a good one. I, I'm not, I'm not going to ponder that. I want that. one of those ones, like, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's around to hear it, does it make a noise thing? Like, I mean, that yeah, I can think it, it about. It does. But let's have another one. Let's it does, have one that's yeah, actually, but... like, a que- like, that kind of shit. That vein. Okay. A monk told Joshu. Joshu again. Yeah, this yeah, guy. just as Joshu. <laughs> I've just entered the monastery. Please teach me. Yeah. So Joshu asked, have you eaten your rice porridge? The monk replied, I have eaten. Joshu said, then you better wash your bowl. And at that moment, the monk was enlightened. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. I Jesus mean, Christ. What the fuck? I think, uh, honestly, I think if I had well, <laughs> that much spare time on my hands, I would not be reading that shit. I got to be honest. Like, I might even consider watching anime before I read <laughs> yeah, that. For real. That, that is my endorsement of anime. That's the biggest endorsement you'll ever hear. I'm with Sips on this one. I Like, my review of that book is I would actually rather watch anime. <laughs> I would rather watch a dog lick a shit out of his ass. <laughs> 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 hang on, hang on. Okay, hang on. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. I've got another one. Actually, I'm, I'm fucking Googling that right now. See if there's any of that on YouTube. What, a dog eating shit out of its ass? Yeah, it's got to be. Dude. It's not that there's, bad. That's For gross. God's sake, Sips. What? Don't link me. Man, I'm trying to expand my mind. Like, I know I'm not going to like watching that. But. <laughs> Just, you know, until you've experienced watching a dog having <laughs> lick a lick shit, out, shit of its out of its ass. ass. How do you know you don't like it? <laughs> I think cats would I be able up. to do that better because they got like that fucking traction on their tongues, right? Yeah, like the they got the grip. Tongues. Yeah, they got the so, grip. So yeah, they'd get the grip. They'd be able to get it out faster if it was a race. They're a bit bendier too. I think I'm not going to be no, able no, no, to. No, no, come on. Come on, Lewis. You guys Come this, on, Lewis. Because Zen, I'm not. Zen, a, Zen, I'm. Zen, I'm. Zen, the, Zen, you're, well, Zen. you're still a novice yourself, right? You've only just started reading I, it. Yeah, and I'm worried that that this is not going to help you guys. If you become a Zen master one day, though, like you could totally get us in on that, right? Do you want? Do you want to hear more? Yes, I'm loving yeah, this. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Do you want to hear a story, or do you want to hear a, a, a weird? Parable thing. Ha- the story. Do you know what? Story. Actually, you know what I'm going to do in this case? I'm going to give a typical Zen answer. Shanene. <laughs> Shanene. <laughs> Do you know what? Take from that what that, you will. That I think you're closer than you realize when you give that kind of answer. Uh, okay, Gudo was the emperor's Zen teacher of his time. Nevertheless, he used to travel alone as a wandering mendicant. I don't know what that is. Okay. Once. <laughs> Wait, okay. let me Google mendicant before you go any no, further. Don't. It depends how you spell uh, it, once, though. When there, he was look, on look, his... All right, here it is. There are two kinds of people, mendicant and mendicant. And he's a mendicant. <laughs> 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 Apparently, it means they're a, 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 beg, a beggar. That's what they are. All right. A beggar. Right. A beggar yeah. He used to travel alone as a wandering beggar. Once he was on his way to Edo, 
the capital of the shogunate, yeah. he approached a little village named Takenaka. It was evening, and a heavy rain was falling. Gudo was thoroughly wet. His straw sandals were in pieces. At a farmhouse near the village, he noticed four or five pairs of sandals in the window and decided to buy some dry ones. The woman who offered him the sandals, seeing how wet he was, invited him to remain for the night in her house. Gudo accepted, thanking her. He entered and recited a sutra before the family shrine. What's a sutra? Then intru- it's like a little verse. Right. Um, he then was introduced to the woman's mother and to her children. Observing that the entire family was depressed, Gudo asked what was wrong. My husband is a gambler and a drunkard, the housewife told him. When he happens to win, he drinks and becomes abusive. When he loses, he borrows money from others. Sometimes he becomes thoroughly drunk. He does not come home at all. What can I do? I will help him, said Gudo. Here is some money. Get me a gallon of fine wine and something good to eat. Hell yeah. Then you may retire. I will meditate before the shrine. When the man of the house returned about midnight, quite drunk, he bellowed, Hey, wife, I am home. Have you something for me to eat? I have something for you, said Gudo. I happened to be caught in the rain, and your wife kindly asked me to remain here for the night. In return, I have brought some wine and fish, so you might as well have them. The man was delighted. He drank the wine and laid himself down on the floor. Gudo sat in meditation beside him. And in the morning, when the husband awoke, he had forgotten about the previous night entirely. Who are you? What are you doing in my house? He asked Gudo, who was still meditating. I am Gudo of Kyoto, and I am going on to Edo, replied the Zen master. The man was utterly ashamed. He apologised profusely, for he had heard of the great Zen teacher of his emperor. Gudo smiled. Everything in this life is impermanent, he explained. Life is very brief. If you keep on gambling and drinking, you will have no time left to accomplish anything else, and you will cause your family to suffer too. The perception of the husband awoke, as if from a dream. You are right, he declared. How can I ever repay you for this wonderful teaching? Let me see you off and carry your things a little way. If you wish, assented Gudo. The two started out. After they had gone three miles, Gudo told him to return. Just another five miles, he begged Gudo. They carried on. After five miles, Gudo said, You may return now. After another ten miles, the man replied. Return now, said Gudo, when ten miles had been passed. And the man was silent, and then said, I am going to follow you all the rest of my life. Modern Zen teachers in Japan spring from the lineage of a famous master who was the successor of Gudo. His name was Munan, the man who never turned back. Is that it? That's it. So listen, this guy, <laughs> yeah. this guy is fame whoring hardcore, okay? Because he was like, who the fuck are you? Until he was like, said his name. And then the guy was like, oh shit, that's the emperor's like fucking right hand Zen master or whatever. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm all, 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 all over this now. And then he didn't even want to go back to his family or anything. Like he just thought that he was just going to have more money and shit to gamble from being associated with Somebody famous. I don't think that's necessarily the case because Zen masters are notoriously um, big drinkers. Like, he's a mendicant. <laughs> he's a wandering beggar. You know, his life was very basic and kind of simple. He didn't have any luxury. Zen people don't necessarily value physical things like They're that. They're ascetic. No, ascetic. Ascetic. Yeah. And maybe that was part of the game plan, though. He's like, look, this guy. He's like, you know, he's well known. People are going to give him shit. He's not going to want it, and he's just going to give it to me. So he's like, yeah, fuck, I'll do that. I see. I see what you're thinking. Anytime they go to a place and they lay out two glasses of wine, he's getting both because Zen guy ain't going to drink it. Let me get that for you. Exactly. He's clearly a rotten apple and he's taking advantage. I I thought you might like this one because you two both have families. And I thought you you were thinking the story was going to be, oh, well, you know, he turned his life around and he was a good father after that. But no, No. he fucking left his family. Yeah, yeah. It just like (laughs) continued. Well, at least he's consistently an asshole. Wanted to just peace and go wandering out and live a simple life and leave the kids back home. Well, you know, it's a bad day. Yeah. But you, you know, wake up the next day, it's another day. I don't think you can yeah. judge life by one day. There's some fucking Zen for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you get to the end of a bad day and you're like, man, what's the point? And then your kid turns around to you and said, you know what? That Mario level was the best one you ever did. Like, <laughs> now go clean well, your fuck, bowl. I, I, I guess I'll stay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go. Oh my god, that was great. Um, thank you for listening to that. I, I will, I will 
probably see if I can find some more wisdom to share with you. Find some future, good, at least real, a real crack. Yeah, yeah. Some people could set them in though as well. If you've got those like, are good ones though. But then again, I like them. if you just want riddles, then no, there's no, better no, no, riddles not out a riddle, there. But I mean, I'm thinking that if I'm if I'm going to sit and ponder something, yeah. like obviously I'm going to ponder things. Like I'm going to think, well. We're being very judgmental about that guy. Yeah. I wonder what Civ Six is going to be like. That's what you're pondering. That's what I might have been thinking. And yeah. Apparently, I mean, there, there's or a big... like, how do they get the caramel in the Snickers bar as well? That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? If there, there's a, you start open up a Zen church somewhere, and they come in, and there's just sips chilling there, and they're like, yeah. they come up to you and say, "Do you have a Zen question for me to ponder?" How the hell do they get that caramel on that Snickers bar? And then you just turn. Man, I think I'd be pretty good at look that. Look distant, and they're like, "That must be a really deep question. We're gonna have to think about this." Yeah, but in fact, we need somebody like on the background pan flutes for that too. Like, <laughs> how do they do it? Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> and then they they come back. The in wind a week. starts blowing. <laughs> yeah, master. Oh man! And they're like, Fuck "I googled yeah. it. It's just a machine that does it. It's very. It's a simple mechanical operation." You're like, "Is it?" No, that is not the answer. <laughs> and they ding the bell and you must return in another week with another answer. I've handcrafted a Snickers bar and I now understand the method of inserting caramel. No, you don't. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Just keep them going. Master, can the machine that inserts the caramel into the Snickers bar truly be a Buddhist? Shanene. <laughs> 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 and then you're like, leave the Snickers, leave the Snickers bar, and go about your business. Leave, leave the Snickers. That's fine. Oh man, I, I mean, like, I, like I'm poking fun at it, but like some of this stuff, I think I could be interested in and and take seriously. But honestly, I just don't have any fucking time. Like, I, I feel like I would need like a good go of it. Like, I need to have some time to read stuff and get into it or whatever. And I just. I, I like, feel like a lot I'm of it too busy. is it, it might have been like it's almost like talking about something that was revolutionary in its day and it should still be mind blowing now. Yeah. I mean, stories like that, I'm kind of like, well, I mean, we've got a kind of cynical modern worldview. I don't think people were as cynical. Back I think then. It, it, I think some of them definitely are sort of parables or kind of moralistic stories based on how to live your life, almost like Bible stories. You know, like I think back in the day, the Bible was a very good source of stories. You know, people obviously the way people learn is often through stories and telling stories and stories are such an integral part of, of who we are. Yeah. But these days, you know. Stories. We have so many stories inundating us all the time. There's, there's, there's always stories, and I think that 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 sometimes some of these things don't necessarily age well. Do you know? What? I don't think they necessarily have translated too well either. In some cases, yeah, yeah. from the original. It's language. also kind of cultural, isn't it? It's like the meaning of those stories will have a different meaning to people who've grown up with a Japanese culture as opposed to yeah, me, who grew sure. up, or Lewis, who just grew up watching anime. But there's yeah, a big yeah. difference. <laughs> But sometimes you'll be like, though. "When's he gonna power up and go go on, like zip lightning everybody?" Tattoo, make this and boo. Like your your Zen power is strong, but are you level fifteen yet? What's up, pow? You know, it's like that. Yeah, that's Zen for you. That's Zen. Yeah, that's Zen, baby. That can be the title of the podcast. That's Zen, that's, baby. That that's Zen for you, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had a lot of a lot of messages about the anime thing. I and mean, I was talking to Sips before we started about whether I want to reopen that can yeah. of worms or whether we just Shove want to new worms put, into a, the put can a lid as well. on it and just say, no more, yeah, yeah. no mass. Are we done? Do you have any parting shots that you would like to deliver to the anime community, period? Uh, I, I kind of want to give a final word to it, and I, but it's a multi-part final word. All right. So okay. first of all, in response to people saying that me calling anime a genre is wrong, I, I looked this up and it very carefully lists that anime is not a genre, that it's more like the, you know, it's the way they do things, like it's the way, it's, it's like a, a, um, a format, if you like. Yeah. But the, the source for that was a book called Everything an Anime Fan Needs to Know, which is kind of a biased source. So I'm not entirely sure that you could say that anime isn't a genre. Uh, it is to me, and uh, you know that's a Zen question for you. Is it genre a de definitive thing, yeah. or is it something that you could say is it in the you know? If, to me, when I watch anime, a lot of it seems very samey and similar. So a lot of people sent me movies that they or things. Try this; it's so good, and all this kind of stuff. And I went and looked at about five to ten minutes of each of these things. They're all for some reason available on YouTube, a ton of these. Like full movies and stuff, just right there, which I think might explain part of the popularity. It's readily available. And look, if I was 15, I'd love this shit. It's violent, 
It's cartoony. It's kind of goofy. It's very simple to understand and follow. There's not a lot to it. And I mean, for instance, this one guy sent me this thing called Paranoia Agent, which he describes as a David Lynch-esque show. Right. All right. Now, I was watching it. It, it definitely is not David Lynch-esque. Like, there, there's there's very little... There's there's no second layer to a lot of this stuff. It's all very straightforward. If someone's thinking something, it's written on their face. Normally, if they're angry, they'll they'll do that thing where their eyes like go like X's and there's a little storm cloud over their head. That kind of shit. It's like I get it. He he's unhappy. <laughs> this guy's unhappy. I'm glad I didn't need to to use my brain to figure this out or you know you know figure out what he was thinking from say acting or dialogue. It's literally like. <gasps> And there's like a storm cloud. Oh, he's angry. All right, good. It's simple. It tells you what you need to know. Just like we were talking about My Little Pony, about how it's literally like, let's go upstairs to get my book. Here I am going up the stairs to get my book. It's like, it's, okay, it right, lays right, it out right, for right, you. Right. So yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying, hold on. I, I'm not saying that anime is, is as simple, is all as simple as My Little Pony. But what I am saying is that when I looked at these ones that people were suggesting were these more adult animes and stuff, the more adult ones, there's a lot of very static shots of someone looking at a sunset or they're in a field. And it's like, that doesn't make it deep it makes it deep when you're 15 but it's not deep that's my oh, point hang on well listen right first of all you love star I, wars I'm, okay for a start i am not someone who bangs on and on about star wars as it, as if it's some kind of great i mean if you watch the original star wars films i i am looking at them with a huge amount of nostalgia yeah like if i if the new star wars if, if the new star wars film i really really enjoyed it but it was a remake of the older star wars films but remade for a modern audience i think it was it was still my kids watched it and they loved it it's not a complicated movie no it's just a fun action movie that's fine i am never Never gonna think, tell you that Star Wars it's, is it's out amazing. now, right? Like, yeah, it's out on Blu-ray yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. all that kind of crap now. And I, I watched it the second time. I didn't enjoy it as much as the first. It time. was good. It, it, no, it was, it was really good. I, I loved it. I still do like it, but like watching it the second time, yeah. there were parts where I was like, no, this yeah, part wasn't yeah, like yeah. that great and stuff. You There's know? so many points here. Okay, first of all, Star Wars. If you love Star Wars, you, you know, who, who are you to say that if someone didn't just, you know, like Duncan loved Pokemon, grew up with Pokemon, collected the cards, played the games. Yeah. I saw him yesterday. He wasn't playing the Hearthstone expansion. He was playing Pokemon Online Trading Unbelievable. Game. Unbelievable. Okay? Wow. And Let me unfriend you know him just very quickly no, on stage. No, don't do that because you are like that with Star Wars. No, right? I'm not. You have this nostalgia. In no way am Shut I like that. Shut the fuck up. Star Wars is a kid's film. <laughs> right. Right. Have I ever said anything to the contrary? Well, no, but you're now saying that I'm not going to watch anything that's made for a 15-year-old. It's like, oh, it would be great. I'm not watching yeah, television he likes, now. If it's, he if likes it's Star for Wars. If it is a kid's film and the first time he saw it was when he was a kid, then that's cool, right? Just because like, you're guess, 40 like, now, Duncan... right? doesn't mean you have to watch, you know, Murder, She Wrote and stuff. And like, you know, it doesn't mean you have to start, you know, watching these things that are designed for adults. Or, Shit, or, that or reminds or me. Else. Guys, I'm really sorry. I've got to cut this short because actually Murder, She Wrote is on right now. And yeah. I cannot miss it today. <laughs> Angela was like so close to cracking the case. And like, it was like to be continued. Columbo is on after I it, by the way. I love Columbo. Matlock Holy is on shit. after that too. It's like the... <laughs> CBS, <laughs> CBS crime drama. I have to go. And then Sorry. I can take a real world and watch some Jub, Judge Judy. Fuck, Judge Judy. St slap, slap the rules on them kids. I watch, well, punish them. Is youngins. that still on? They show it every day. Shit. Yeah, they show Judge Judy all the time. I thought she died, but she's fine, apparently. Well, first of all, she's not a real judge. You know that, right? What? She's not a real judge. She's not qualified as a judge. She's not a judge in any kind of Googling way. Googling this. And the way the way show is made your is, is they actually you shut up. find people from across the country. Retired Manhattan family court judge Judith Scheindlin. She's, she's not actual judge, though. She, she's, she's an American she lawyer, former judge. She quit to do the TV show, so she's not she an actual judge. She was an ex she does have experience in the but judicial But the way they do the series field, is they, it's, it's this Hollywood bullshit. They pay everyone, like whether they win or lose, and they pay for them to fly out and Wait, stay in a hotel. Wait, are you trying to say that they're... What? That they're purposely trying to make a TV show entertaining? Yes, that's exactly Instead what Instead of ultra-realistic, because... I'm appalled. I'm fucking... Anyway, all right. let's move away from Just Judy for a second and back on to the, the topic of disastrous stuff. But but everything you've said, PFLAX, hasn't really changed anything. The fact is that anime is a little bit like Netflix or BBC iPlayer, right? There's EastEnders on there, Antiques Roadshow, Bargain Hunt. You know, there's cartoons, there's 
there's kids shows, there's adult shows, right? If you're going to watch the anime that's kids shows, then of course you're going to hate it. You're going to hate watching Puppy Pals and Pup, what is it, Puppy Patrol? But that's what I'm saying is I've watched the stuff, I've watched enough of the stuff that's meant to be for adults. Oh, this is really deep and grown up anime. And I still don't think it is. It well, just looks I, I, boring as shit. And I don't like the the way it's all, I, I, like I said, it's so, it's, there's so many tropes are overused and so many characters, are, you, they're, they're so You can't cutter. really say that though, because you can't, because there's always new stuff I coming can, out. I can, listen, I'll say it right this. It's boring, cookie cutter, I don't like it, full stop. Okay. There, I said it. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> He did, but, actually. But I can attest he did say that. He was that. witnessed. Yeah. It's kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater a little bit, though, you know, I think. Just Oddly you... enough, that was the case I was on Judge Judy for. Oh, I my tried God. to explain myself to Judy. She wasn't taking My it. neighbor came over to give my kid a bath, and when she threw out the bathwater, she threw out my kid at the same time. I want 500 bucks. <laughs> and Judge Judy said, shaboo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> well, consider <laughs> this. <laughs> She's a Zen master. What a story. Yeah. She, you guys, fuck me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's move on to games. Have you guys okay. played any games this week? Have you seen mm. any games? This is the worst part of the podcast. <laughs> uh, you know what I've been playing all week for the second week in a row? Well, hang on a sec. Before we talk about games that we've been playing, how about we talk about games that have come out recently okay. or that are coming out this week? Do you guys know uh, any? The Hearthstone expansion. Whispers of the old gods. Yeah, that came out. Yeah. Uh, Lewis, you've been playing a lot of Hearthstone. And Pyrian, we talked re- like right before the podcast. You've also been playing a bit yep, of Hearthstone. Yep, 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 yep. Um, and actually, when the expansion came out, I, for the first time in about six months, played Hearthstone. But I haven't finished like the solo adventures Same. from the previous League of Explorers thing. Oh. So I was doing those. And I haven't even really seen any of the new cards yet. And I don't know if I'm going to play it enough to ever see them. Honestly, like I'm a bit, I'm a bit bummed out about standard. Like I thought standard was going to be easier for people to play free to play and not have to unlock like all all the cards and stuff, but you still have to buy packs probably or spend gold to buy packs to like unlock cards and stuff. And it's like, I don't know. I was a bit disappointed about that. I thought standard was going to be like, here you go. Here's like, um, you know, the past year of cards or whatever, make whatever deck you can and compete in standard against people that can only use the same cards. No, no, they're copying Magic the Gathering. I mean, Hearthstone's always been Magic the Gathering casual, Magic the Gathering light, Magic the Gathering online. Everything that Magic the Gathering should have been, but didn't because it got bought out by a massive toy company and never was encouraged to innovate or build platforms or build anything fun. Right. Magic the Gathering... Has, it was locked down by too many constraints. And Hearthstone is is this, this is a much stronger spiritual success. You see people like Keebler come from Magic the Gathering and do very, very well out of Hearthstone and, yeah. and desert Magic the Gathering for Hearthstone because, you know, magic is, is frustrating. The, the mechanics are frustrating. Like every single thing you do, you can play on your opponent's turn and, and every single thing they do on their turn, they have to say, can I do this? And the opponent has to say, yes, it's bullshit. Like there's so many little trivial things and lands getting land starved, getting, you know, or, or the opposite, getting flooded with land. And it's, it's kind of just stupid. And Hearthstone fixed a lot of those problems and it has done. Standard is a copy of Magic the Gathering Standard, which is their, this is their format, um, which works. And the reason it does that is because it allows them to have a set pool of cards that, that changes, that rotates, encourages people to buy new cards, and it also allows people to join. The part of the problem was that you, PFLEX, have recently joined Hearthstone and not having any cards, not having any idea, any idea. And it was the bounds to joining Standard were too high for you because you had to get like five or six you expansions talking to, worth. You're talking about me? Yeah. I mean, you, you did it though, didn't you? You bought all of the expansions, but how much would it cost? How much did you spend on Hearthstone to get going be flat uh, in the game i don't know as a new player quite a lot i think yeah i probably you, you, and, spent uh, like 100 and 100 quid maybe yeah yeah but for most people who are never going to spend close to that on a game you know they they have to lower the bounds to entry okay so what they've done here is they've made this standard thing they've added this 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 card called cthoon which everyone gets oh it's the best yeah the cards that you use to build that deck are very simple they they can be put into any class so most of the cthoon cards that give him buffs or whatever are good cards uh, they're commons they're cheap they're easy to get if you want to craft them they cost next to nothing but you can get them out of packs so easily um, and so and so what it does is it, it basically means that this game won't start losing audience because the more complicated, the more long running, the more hard to get into a game is, the less people are going to yeah. uh, play it. But, okay? but in standard, it's a yeah. year's worth of cards. Two, two years, I think. I think, two? It's, I think it's you two still years, need yeah. to have bought the the adventures, right? So you need Blackrock. So you need Blackrock. You need, you need Argent Tournament. League of Explorers. And you need League of Explorers. 
I needed whispers of the opus. But Argent Tournament wasn't a a paid for thing. And same with whispers. Yeah. Like so they were just card it, packs. It just updates the client and it's card packs. So you need to definitely buy two solo adventures, which for the full thing is like that what's it's like twenty pound each. Yeah. Sort of thing. So that's forty pounds. Plus, if you don't want to grind your balls into oblivion playing Hearthstone to get some decent cards from Argent Tournament, because there's probably a couple, and then decent cards from this most recent expansion, you're gonna probably spend money on packs and stuff as well. So standard is still there's there's still money involved. It's not yeah. it's not necessarily a case of rocking up and being like, okay, here, like I'm just gonna test my skill at this game or have fun with it or whatever. You, there's still like a, a pretty big monetary barrier to to overcome to get started. That in said, I think that, that there are there are ways. To, that, that, I mean, the quests do give you a decent amount of cash and, and packs. So certainly, like you can get almost ten old gods packs for for free yeah. now, yeah. Uh, just from the quests. Yeah, and so that's you know it means that. People coming in, they really do get a, a taste. I, I don't know. Look, I'm not. I, I, I'm not going to say I'm a fan of their business model or whatever. I just think that that there's a reason they're doing this, and it's because they didn't just want the game to become more complex and further away, so that new players would just be totally daunted by it. Sure. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a free game, and then if you have to spend some money to really get competitive, I think you can get the game for free. You can definitely play it you can do like yeah. you know do arena, some quests Tavern do the Brawl. arena i mean my my buddy hardly ever buys decks because he just he's really good in arena so he's really good at building arena decks and he just hits the arena up so I, yeah you know let's say if you're gonna dedicate the time like if you get the game which you can get for free and you're playing the game for free and you're loving it and you're really good at it you should be able to get enough stuff to at least tick over and then maybe if you want you can drop a bit of money on some packs and things i kind of like that yeah. like if they, if they charge 50 quid for the game up front i think that would put a lot of people off it would yeah i don't know like i think that it's a it's a weird one like part of me thinks that Part of it is fair. And then other parts of me just see like this stuff sort of becoming like, it's not just Hearthstone, but like a lot of the stuff that Blizzard does now is like, you know, they're, 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 they're going big, like on the, the sort of microtransaction stuff. And a lot of it is like cosmetic stuff or whatever, not in the case of Hearthstone, but like they'll, they'll, they'll cross promote their, their stuff, you know, like Overwatch is coming out now. So like in Heroes of the Storm, for instance, if you, pre if you pre-ordered this super fucking special boner edition of Overwatch, you get Tracer as as a hero in Heroes of the Storm. Right. And that's the only way that you can get Tracer God. in Heroes of the Storm. And she's fucking bullshit, just like she is in Overwatch. <laughs> she's like a fucking terror to play against, especially if somebody's playing her well. Cause she's really fucking obnoxious. She moves around very fast and she's like really hard to kill. And she's the same in Heroes of the Storm. And it's like I just fucking hate like some of this stuff. Like I, I mean, I like Blizzard. Like I really like Blizzard. I still really like their games. I like their IPs and stuff. But like, fuck, I just like I don't know how that locked door. It's just it's it's so much fucking money all the time, and it's like you know they're they're big and they you know they've got tons of games, tons of like massively popular games, and Overwatch is gonna be no exception. You know, people are so fucking hyped about it. They're gonna buy it. They're gonna lap it up and everything. Sometimes and I mean. Some games were expensive back in the day, though. I remember paying forty quid for a box copy of, of Zelda or Mario sixty four or something. It was expensive. It was a yeah. lot of money. Yeah. And you know, getting it for free and spending, you know, then again, like you end up spending more of the time. I think. I think. Do you know what though? I think it's it's a case of evolution. Okay. It's it's a, it's a it's a case of natural selection in that the games which are the most addictive on the iPad or or have the best profitable most bus most profitable business model are the ones that stick around, are the ones that end up being popular. Yeah. It's just, it's just, and, and it's survival of the fittest. It really is. And so yeah. obviously this psychological business model of making something free and then making you spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on it instead of 40 pounds, you know, and then making you come back and feel really invested because you keep buying stuff and like, oh, mm. you know, and, and oh, he plays that game, let's buy him a thing in that game. You know, that whole, that whole thing yeah. of that psychological business model of free to play is, is, is just so effective. And it, it's hit that some, someone, you know, the first people to do it were like, holy shit, we've hit a fucking gold mine here. Yeah. And then now everyone does it. And, and I think that in many ways, some games can't afford to, or at least blizzard at the top, they say, well, look, we, we've put like this many millions into developing overwatch. We can't not make that back. How we no, of do course. that? This is I, our business model. We sell it for a shit. I understand. And that. then we fucking do microtransactions after that. I, I, I don't think it's, it's cool 
when games have bounds like hearthstone you're right hearthstone and these other games have bounds to competitiveness you can't play competitively unless you spend x amount of money or x amount or of you time. just have an, a yeah like a an extraordinary amount of time like invested in this it. is another, another thing that I'm, I'm kind of my current thinking is that i played a lot of dota right and then i started to think how i talked about this yesterday on deck rookers but because i started to get to the end of an evening of dota and think how many games do i played tonight i couldn't even remember how many games <laughs> i played yeah yeah you know and i certainly couldn't remember what happened in them and i read a lot of stuff about this stuff and it basically is that your your mind your your brain doesn't remember stuff if it's too similar to stuff you've been doing before so for example one of the classic things is that i used to drive back and forth to work um the same route every day it was so boring it's like a half an hour route that and sometimes I would get to the end of my drive and I'd be like, oh, fuck me. I'm here. I'm home already. Was I just like zoned out that whole way home? Because, you know, mate, what if I was concentrating? There's like 20 dead cats like attached yeah. to your car. And that's what I was terrified of. I was terrified that I'd somehow fallen asleep at the wheel or something or like, you know, and I couldn't remember what I'd done. But actually it was because I'd done something that was so similar, that was so repetitive, that so samey to, every, to, to me doing it another hundred times that my brain just didn't remember it. Yeah. It didn't need it. It didn't remember it. And that's what happens with Dota. I think that's what happens with Hearthstone. And when, you know, I think about, holy shit, how many hours I put into this. I think basically what I'm trying to get away from in my life at the moment is extremely repetitive things. Mm. And I don't think that's bad. Okay. I, I necessarily, I think that, I think that sometimes, sometimes something that's repetitive can be very soothing. It can be very enjoyable. It can be very relaxing. And I think that's something that you definitely need in your life. Okay. If you find yeah. a, something like, like something that's similar and you're good at and it's comforting, then sure, you know, do it and keep it, but be aware that, you know, if you're just doing it to waste time, then it's probably not a good thing for you. So I, I'm, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to have another of these Saturdays where I just sit at home and play Dota all day because I think that it just is. It's, it's going to be like I'm not going to remember it. It's just going to delete out of my brain. I'm not really going to enjoy it. Fuck it. And um, I kind of have that attitude. So I've, I've trying to be exploring a bit more playing games. So I, I installed the game I played this week was Factorio a little bit more, which again is quite repetitive, but. Um, I installed a bunch of mods. So I installed um, Bob's mods for Factorio. Right. Now, if you know about Factorio P Flag. I still haven't played it. Still looks too too detailed for me. Oh, you haven't it's, actually played it no, though? No, no, no. At you all. should play it with you us, might like man, because it. man, it's, it's, it's pretty intense. Um You don't have to you don't have to think about everything. You know what I mean? Like if you play with people especially, you can just go off into a corner and like get one sort of supply chain up and running and just do that thing and it's it's pretty fun it's it's really satisfying actually hmm. it's bob's it's nice. adds about 10 new ores to the game or deposits and that basically makes it a lot more complicated it changes a lot of recipes and so that you need a lot more components and one of the things i tried to do was build a effectively a main bus i.e like um 10 conveyor belts running through the very center of everything right having everything on them so iron copper lead tin I had um, like circuit boards, bigger circuit boards, soldering stuff, like uh, components, all, all these stuff like running through as a main bus. And then you just pull stuff off the main bus to build little all sort of miniaturized factories of like what you need. And then they head back onto this main bus. I don't think you, the main bus can have everything, but certain certain things are obviously needed. What I was finding on Factorio is that you'd set up iron or lead or something that makes something, a little factory that makes like inserters on one side of the base. And then you build something on the other side of the base and you'd realize, oh shit, that actually needs stuff from this side of the base and the other side and somewhere else. And then you have to try and run it through this center area, which is always going to be a, a spaghetti junction because you're just trying to weave yeah. pipes over each other. Right. Um, and man, it was really, it was really satisfying to do that. So I, 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 I played it with a, a, the, the, the thing that I wouldn't build any solar panels as well, right? So my pollution was just going crazy. So I was just being attacked constantly. The aliens were getting completely out of control. And um, man, it was, it was. I, I didn't get very, 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 very far, but. I could see myself wanting to play another game of Modded Factorio multiplayer. Mm. Yeah. And I, I think I'd probably play one more and that would be it, you know. Unless they unless they, they add more stuff to the game. Like, it's one of those, like, you sort of, you finish a game and you're like, cool, like, I'll come back. Because Factorio is the kind of game where the guys who make it will just keep working on it, I think. I hope. That's what I, that's what I like about, I've been playing RimWorld um, again. Yeah, RimWorld's like a, a good it's, example It's a great game. And they, they a bit like... So uh, RimWorld's not on Steam, right? No, it's not. It's, it's, I think it's Ludeon Studios, L-U-D-E-O-N. But uh, 
uh, I bought it fucking years and years ago when it was like really yeah. just came out because I, I love that kind of game. I was a big Dwarf Fortress fan um, before I just got sick of having to relearn it every time I put it down for a couple of months. I'd have to relearn all the shortcuts. It's a like, really steep learning curve, yeah, Dwarf it, Fortress. It's so hard. I mean, it's, a, yeah. it's an amazing game if they could... It's awesome. If they could just have the Rimworld aesthetics or prison architect yes. or anything. But with yes. that back, I would be like, I am so far into this game. Like I would never come out, right? The shit that happens in Dwarf Fortress is like nothing you've seen in a game before. Like it's, it's crazy, nuts. but you have to really look to find Beyond that the stuff. numbers. Yeah. It's like looking into the matrix Dwarf Fortress, it right? Is. You have to kind of use your imagination so much. And it's just so team time consuming, like having to do anything. Yeah. I mean, when you're really into it, it feels, I can see why people People love yeah. it. Like it's a really nerdy game. It's almost like programming. And when I was wanted to do that kind of stuff, and I'd be like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" You know, I was really into it. But Rimworld is like a really light version of Dwarf Fortress, and they've started to add things in that make it kind of Dwarf Fortressy. So you have stuff like um, your colonists can fall in love, yeah. and I love the the detail. Like one of my guys had a fight with a tortoise, um, and he got one of his fingers bitten off and lost an eye. Right, so. When he then he then built a statue at the uh, sculpting table, and it was of a couple falling in love because he'd also fallen in love with one of the other colonists. But it said there was a foreboding sense of of death about the sculpture, like when it's describing the sculpture. Yeah. And in the background, you can see a tortoise and a lot of blood. So I love the idea that some colonist has recreated the moment they fell in love, but in the back of their mind, they like, know yeah. they lost that eye to that Blood fucking tortoise. <laughs> so there's, it's just, you, yeah. like, you, you find that. Like, it doesn't show it to you. You have to click on it and look at the description and find it. But it's those little stories that emerge yeah. that tie you into the game. And but, It's like, it, it's the random shit that happens too, right? right? Like, you're not always guaranteed for something. Like, I I had a game of Room World going one time and I had a pretty cool base. You know, everything was pretty fairly efficient not super duper efficient people had like roles and you know they were off getting stuff we had plenty of supplies everybody was doing fine and then this like capsule landed on the planet from outer space it was like emanating this like these like negative waves yeah, yeah. that was that were making people unhappy and over time they just got so unhappy that they went crazy and they started killing each other and that was the end of the game yeah <laughs> it was like and it was and and i could have done something about it but i didn't know that i had to do something about it like i was quite happy that it was there i was kind of worried that if i went and investigated it something would come out and just wipe out the whole colony something does come out if you attack that, a big um, an insect comes out with a chain gun. I believe that happened right. to me in one of my other games, and it so, it, it did the well, same I'm glad thing. I didn't yeah. check yeah. it. But but yeah. So in the meantime, if you don't check it, unless you you're like having a lot of fun in your base at all times to counter like the negative waves, <laughs> yeah. you're fucked because your dudes are just gonna go crazy. And like, but that doesn't guarantee it happen every time you play the game. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just think that shit like that is awesome. You know, it's like great. it throws in these random events and these. Just these things that can happen, you know, like there's a lot of chance, you know, like you get raided, somebody will just get headshot and die. See, Other times everyone will survive, you know. For like some it's, reason, this game has passed me by and I think it's because someone recommended it to me. I looked on Steam, it wasn't on Steam. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's, it's like the original Mojang Minecraft wasn't on Steam, you know, Minecraft yeah. is, still isn't on Steam, I guess. Um, obviously, it works out for the guys, but... <laughs> For me, I've missed RimWorld entirely, and I'm now I've just bought it while we were chatting, and so I'll, I'll install it's great. and have a go yeah. over the weekend. It's like it's like Prison Architect aesthetically. It looks like a lot like Prison yeah. They Architect. borrowed a, they, they borrowed a lot of the the style, I think. Yeah, yeah. From, from RimWorld, yeah. But it, it it plays different, and it's it's fun. It's definitely it's definitely fun, especially if you like dwarf fortressy yeah. type games it's got it's got know, like that kind of uh, roguelike element to it where i think random shit will happen that wipes you out yeah and you just have to try and learn from it like incrementally yeah so for instance i i started a base it was going well and one of the things you'll find when you land when your pods crash land is there's all kinds of shit around the map that you can investigate and stuff like that and there was what looked like a building set into the side of a mountain so it was like an ancient structure and when one of my colonists went near it she, it, she got a sense of foreboding coming from it. So, of course, I opened it up. Guess what's in there? It's like an alien base. They had, like, there was all kinds of technology in there. There's, like, multiple aliens chilling in there. And I was like, holy shit. Game over. Like, they poured out, psychic knived all my guys. They blew them all up. And it was like, end of game. They even killed my dog, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I was testing this game the other day um, for me and Sips to play. 
and um, we were. I didn't. I, I I had like a pet dog, and it said, "Oh, you know, the dog's hungry." And I was like, "All right." So I clicked on the dog. I couldn't find any way to like feed it. I was like, "Well, maybe it's just hungry. Maybe it's always going to be like that." And then fucking it died, and it was just like <laughs> rotting and had loads of flies above it. And I couldn't fucking get rid of it out of my face. Oh. And I was like, "Oh my god, what have I done?" Jesus. Oh wow. Jesus yeah. Christ. But yeah, you should try RimWorld. It's a lot of fun. I recommend just pl- play it on the default, like which is like Cassandra Classic. And play play it on rough, uh, and you'll get the early raids will just be tribes people with bows and spears and stuff. Once you get down your little yeah. sentry turrets, you'll be okay. Uh, but you'll learn the timings of when you need to start farming because the seasons. It's it, what I really like. What they've added in is like the temperature and stuff, so you can now have heating and cooling. And we, oh, we see, had, I haven't played since that's been added. Oh, in, it's, so. it's good. Well, yeah. I, I lost a colony to a cold snap. Nice. It suddenly got so so cold. Everyone outside went, went outside to quickly harvest all the food. Yeah. And they all caught hypothermia. And while I'm trying to build heaters to keep them warm, they're struggling outside in like minus forty degree weather to get the steel to build the heaters. Three of them died getting the steel into the house one of them was able to build one heater nice. and she's i just made her hide in there until the cold snap was over but at that point we'd lost so much the colony was basically done for but but it's great man that's a great story to like it's, do you know what though sometimes that's those those moments they're not they're not repetitive in the sense that no dota and hearthstone is repetitive like like you remember yeah, that yeah. i'm gonna always remember that moment in I don't know Factorio when I missed out on those aliens and they got through the fucking wall and they ate all of my whatever you know you yeah. always gonna remember those moments where you're like ah shit I lose yeah, yeah. Kind of it's thing. a different experience every time I, I I was thinking that about Dota a lot a lot of people have been saying to me that oh have you given up on Dota I mean I've got five thousand hours in Dota but I haven't played it much in the last two weeks because a I was waiting for the patch and then I know now the patch is here so by the time this goes out the patch will already be like what two weeks old or something like that and I still have and played it because I'm kind of enjoying taking a break from what was starting to feel very repetitive. Same heroes every game, and you know how the game's going to go from the heroes you've been out drafted. You're like, okay, so we got to do this, we got to do that, and it was starting to get a little bit repetitive, just enough for me to need to take a break from it. Yeah, yeah. I think my philosophy probably on this stuff is to kind of do it all. Do a do if you do want to stay interested in Dota, then you know make yourself only play one game a day. So be like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play one game of Dota, and then we're gonna go and do something else. You know, like I think like. It's that, not, it, it's weird though because it's not that kind of game though, is it? Like I don't know. Do you get much out of Dota if you only play once a day, like one game nah, a day? I don't think so. It's the kind of game where you you know you do have to play a couple of games a day, really, because like it's a like a meta progression thing, isn't it? Like you've got MMR that you want to like increase. You want you know your games, your win loss ratio, and and all that kind of crap. You want to like. But I mean, I don't know. Like it depends. Get, like if it's something you feel that Pflex that you want to stay in touch with and learn, and do, and and not just devote an entire Saturday. You know, it's a little bit like everything like i think that you probably will learn more from playing one game per day than playing seven in one day do you know what I, mean? I, I doubt it yeah. i doubt it do you not think no nah. i think that's how because i find works. that when i when i go back after a break my mechanics are awful like my last hitting really goes downhill i start forgetting about map awareness and stuff whereas it, when i was absolutely caning it and playing like seven eight games a day which for me was a lot then i, I did find that i was getting better and there were more heroes that i was comfortable on i, would think I do would feel now i've reached a point I, I do think i've reached a point now where i could go back and i could pick it up and it would be fine but for a long long time my analogy would be is it better to run a mile every day or seven miles in one day a week probably seven a day i would guess i mean i would i would get it all over with like i'd go seven in a day <laughs> <laughs> and then have six days off yeah yeah, yeah. Well, but no What's better for you? I think that I think that doing a bit every day is better for you, right? It is better for you, but it doesn't apply to gaming okay. because the nature of games and the way that they hook you into games, they're addictive in nature, right? So like the mechanics and the the systems that they put into play, it's like, you know, it's like wow, you don't just log in and do one daily a day and wow and 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 feel good about no, it. No, and by the time you're doing that, you, you log hate in it. and you do 25 a day and then you do a raid and then you do this and that but and that's like the thing, they want like by the time you're logging in every day just to do the daily or just to do the quest, that at that point you fucking hate the game, right? Well, I you think- personally, but there's a lot of people who quite happily log into it every day and still play it and do PVP or whatever, like, you know what no, I mean? They, well, I mean, I think they they log in for their garrison they log in for their daily 
payoff. They log in for their daily thing, and at that point, you know, yeah, it's, 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 they might as well have quit because they're inevitably going to. You know, it, another I, I thing that, that keeps people coming back to these games, though, um, and something that maybe you're 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 discounting is that there's there's community built up around this stuff too, right? You know, like oh, yeah. when you were playing Dota, you weren't just you weren't just grinding and slogging through seven games a day by yourself. You had a, a tight group of people that yeah, you'd yeah. play with, you'd have experiences with, you'd have a, a couple of laughs with, you'd tell each other to eat each other's shit from time to time and stuff. I think that, that, that that's the difference. And it's the same right? as in WoW. You you log into WoW every day because you probably have a bunch of friends that are in your guild that you've probably met through WoW that you like to hang out with and do shit with and you maybe plan to do a wedding in Ironforge every Sunday or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I think that is what keeps people coming back more so than just like the other thing the other is shit. it's not so good for streaming if you just play one game of Dota and then switch. Like a lot of people tune in. Uh, like if I'm streaming for five hours... And at the start, I play one game of Dota, then I'll be losing people because they'll be like, what's he switching to? Oh, I don't like that game. Yeah. So I think kind of what makes me need to take a break from it is, and I've really enjoyed streaming Rust. Like a whole bunch of new people have come in. They don't normally watch it. The devs, like uh, on their dev blog, they put a thing on there talking about uh, the fact that the Yogg's cast and, and, and so on that we were now doing uh, Rust, which was great. I'm really happy that they saw that. And they gave me and Sips a bunch of keys to give away. They gave me 20. They gave you 100. Yeah. Bastards. I don't know why. <laughs> they, I mean, they could have just given us both 100. Well, I guess, I mean, I, I, I gave away all 20 in like 10 minutes. Like there was people just who them up no. but um i'm just like slowly handing them out to people that like make me laugh on twitter that's, that's the key good. i just did a give i just did twitch giveaways and just mashed through gave them all out because i wanted to get people oh, into nice. the game so yeah 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 but but the thing is when i when i'm playing rust it's not like one game i can just play it until i'm sick of it and generally speaking there's always something to be doing something to be doing you can go out and look for a fight or raid base or whatever like that yeah, yeah. and i kind of like that yeah but people were tuning in if i'd played rust for half an hour and then just fucked off and done something else those viewers have been like i thought you were going to play rust like there's kind of a, it's a bit people jarring, are tuning in it? to watch that yeah yeah so yeah when I, that was kind of the thing is when i'm playing dota if I start streaming Dota, I can't switch to another game. Like people are like, what are you doing? We came here to watch Dota. And I'm kind of like, oh yeah, sorry. So I feel almost compelled to to stick with one thing. I, I, I think this is something, this is a different conversation. This is about what your job is versus, you know, what you what you really want to do. I, I think Well, that, we're lucky though, because we have the opportunity that not a lot of people have. Yeah, right? Whereas we can combine We can combine what we want to do into a job yeah. as well, right? I like, just have to well, figure out a way to make it work, like streaming and the yeah. game. That's why I'm, I, I think rust was good for streaming. Using the analogy though of like um how tv used to be okay if some if the game of thrones was showing and it is showing obviously at the moment and it's um the game of thrones one a week yeah. the game the game of thrones i like the way you said that the game of thrones the game. The game. did i say the the game of thrones it, well the the uh the game of thrones <laughs> is showing right once a week and it's good because you get it in these doses and you're like, I'm excited for the next one and great. Like it's the same with me and Duncan playing Factorio. The fact is that me and Duncan are doing the stream together on Mondays and we, we look forward to it. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's a thing to look forward to. Sometimes that's a good thing, right? Because we, we live in this world right now where gratification is so easily accessible you know like with netflix you know you, you watch an episode of, of daredevil i can watch the next story i can watch the next story so there's something nice about that okay yeah but sometimes it tastes sweeter if you can't have it straight away if you have to wait if you have to you know if you put it off it, it, it strings it out i guess what i'm saying is that nowadays you know we get a couple of hearthstone expansions a year we get a wow expansion every year we get a couple, uh, like, you know, maybe a Civ expansion or a Fallout expansion every six months. Like, man, it's I like it because I can almost have this kind of calendar of cool stuff coming out, yeah. you know, yeah. staggered. You know, I, I think that, and that, I think personally, the whole do an hour every day or do... Um, a game every day or do a mile every day is better than exhausting yourself on, on one day and then being bored for another six days. I, I think uh, that... I don't know. I don't know. I think like if you're into something, play it. And then when you're done, move on. Um, yeah, it, that yeah. means doing it like nine hours a day till you're fucking just really sick of it or you've just done everything and you're ready to move on. You that feels too much like work though that you don't necessarily enjoy it sometimes. No, it's the opposite Yeah, though. it's like, great. I'm playing a game until I'm sick of a game and then I go play yeah, another game. I'm playing a game because I want to play this game and yeah. yeah. I, I find it impossible to get into something if I'm only doing it an hour a day yeah. or an hour a week is even worse. God, Holy yeah. fuck, I have no motivation to come back the next week because I'm like, where was 
was I? What was I doing? I'm not immersed. I'm nothing. You know what I mean? Like it's the worst. Like I can't oh, that do was it. Why I never finished. I used to do. Three. I used to do YouTube content like that, and so many series I just never finished because my gameplay was just so massively throttled. Every time I'd come back a week later to record or something, I'd just be like, "Where the fuck am I? Do I even care about this game anymore?" Like I've played, I've started playing other stuff in yeah, between. It's tricky. You know no, what I mean? Like no, I'm not, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with any of the things you said here. I'm, I'm or, 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 or really cool playing devil's advocate too much i i just feel like it it depends doesn't it if 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 it's a game which you are really excited to carry on playing but you've been forced to stop yeah okay so imagine it's a game that you're really excited and really into and you're forced to stop because you can only do an hour yeah and then the next day you can come back and do another but then again you're forced to stop but you really want to carry on right yeah that is a difference between doing an hour and then saying, right, I'm, I've played enough. I'm good. Or, or playing four hours and saying, right, I've played enough and then never coming back to it. Okay. If, if maybe you played an hour and stopped and played an hour and stopped and played an hour and stopped and played an hour, and stopped, maybe that at that point you would have never come back to it as well. Maybe that four hours would have been the same. I'm not saying they yeah. are the same, but maybe they are. But maybe if you just keep that hour going, maybe it goes on for seven, it goes on for eight. Who knows? Um, I'm just saying that it's a different way of interacting with things. I think that, that you know, I sometimes... That we are in this sort of gratification. I, I don't know. This just this psychology of, of gratification. I don't really know about it. Maybe I I, I would like to expand it's, it's a bit like, your mind, Lewis, and it's a bit read lo- about bit it. Like, yeah, I, I just don't. I know. don't know. Like I think I think I think if you're just doing, I think you end up doing a lot of little things, but you never you never get anywhere with them. I feel like if if that's all you're doing, you know, like I'm only going to do this for an hour a day, sort of thing. Like yeah. I don't feel like you'd ever get anywhere with it. And I, I think don't it would think depend what it is. I think it would definitely it, it, yeah, it I guess, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think like, I think on the opposite end of that spectrum, I think, you know, if you pick something up and it really clicks with you and you like it, just fucking do it as much as you can or as much as you want to. But that's a burnout. And then, oh, that's a burnout. How, how does, I've got an important out. question. How does this all equate to masturbation? I just want a heads up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm at the point in my life where I find it, masturbating a chore now like i want to get it over i know i have to do it and i want to get it over with as soon as possible really yeah and you do it like yeah. six times a day and yeah, then yeah. Not for a week really quick yeah i'm like just super get it all efficient out. with it now too like, i i really yeah. get into it and get into you know i really want to learn the ins and outs of it and and I, i'm still yeah, studying yeah. it after all these years i am the zen master of wanking <laughs> <laughs> well what i do is i i limit i limit myself to five hours a day so even like if i haven't you know done my jism right i stop and i think man this is going to be way better tomorrow <laughs> when i do it for me it, for right. me it depends if, if if i'm streaming it or not if i'm not streaming it i can do other things <laughs> right otherwise uh, the audience is like i came here to watch you jerk it off what are you doing <laughs> i came here to see a huge man climax what's going on <laughs> all right listen i think you're streaming on the wrong platform questions we got we got, we got questions. questions. We did not cover games. Let me quickly cover other games that have come out this week. What is it, Sips? There's other games that have come out this week, if you guys care about them. Offworld Trading Company, which is a game that we've played before, mm. is actually fully God out God damn now. those filthy pirates. <laughs> I don't like pirates. Yeah, the <laughs> fantastic it. voice acting. Um, another one that looks kind of interesting that I might pick up, uh, it looks a bit like Game Dev Tycoon, but it's called Pro Gamer Manager. Uh, I guess you okay. just manage your own virtual pro gamers. It might be kind of fun. Oh, I heard of that. That's out this yeah. week. Let's have a look at that. It's fucking oh, bad. Uh, yeah. There's a new adventure indie action horror game called Left Alone, uh, which will probably be picked up by every man child on YouTube that uses a face cam to like scream into wow. um it, it'll be like the new one i guess because horror games tend to sort of go that way i only say this because i am too scared to play them <laughs> uh <laughs> neon chrome i've never heard of sounds big anime screen beta yeah yeah big screen beta is some new vr thing so if you guys have vibes maybe you could try that I've got a Vive. I haven't unpacked it yet. Yeah. I've had it for two weeks or something. It's just in my spare room. And I'm like, man, I'll have to move my computer downstairs and I'll have to clear a space and blah, blah, blah. So I'm thinking I'm going to do it Saturday and, and actually have a go on this bloody thing. So I'm, both those games you suggested, by the way, have been out for fucking ages, but they've, well, officially, just, they've officially released now, yeah. which is kind of bullshit. And I think that's actually bullshit. I don't think we should be talking about these games that have literally... 
ticked over In, from into full release being from... shit for 18 months to now full release no fucking changes yeah. fuck, I, fuck you Offworld Trading Company was okay it was alright it wasn't amazing yeah I mean what have they done to Offworld Trading Company well I don't and know why, why, why does it deserve to be talked about hey maybe it's really I good it now was, I thought it sucked at the time it's 23 quid Jeez. Yeah. I mean how it's, it's have they too, really that's too much. made it that much better I played it I, I mean, played it last week I actually played it I'm last week. I'm literally looking at the popular new releases tab on Steam because I have no idea what's going on in the world of gaming. <laughs> but I really don't. It, it, like, honestly, um, very little has changed in Offworld Trading Company. From when, when we play, I played it when it very first came out in Alpha or Beta, whatever it was, because I thought, wow, this looks interesting. And I played it the other day and very little has changed. It's pretty much the exact same game. And it's very limited, and I do not know how they can charge twenty three quid for it. I think that's r- it's ridiculous. super fucking like chess as well. Do you it know what? It's like too... a, it feels like a mini game. Yeah, and it does. Yeah. It really does. Yeah, but I mean, also you have to learn it. There really, is, or else there other, is. Other people somebody are recommended. Kick your ass. Uh, there is a massive Civ Five mod, which completely changes the game, rebalances everything. I saw it on Rock Paper Shotgun the other day. Wow, and that that looks like quite a big deal. Um, What's it called? Although I I don't know. Right. Civ five rock paper, rock, paper sugar. Right. Let's have a we'll look. We'll just Google it. Let's go. Let's do the questions while uh, right. P Flex does that. Wondrous. The the Civ okay. five community patch project. Oh nice. The, so it's CPP Wondrous. to be named Vox Populi on release as a community mod. It does a huge amount to the game apparently. All right. Uh, and it's it, it looks interesting. Well, I guess you can't do multiplayer with it. Um, I don't I have no idea. I'll, I'll look into it. All right. All right, Pflex. Thank All you right. for that hot tip. Yep. First first question post hot tip. Uh, Tessa van Lunenburg nice. asks do you beautiful guys have a weird habit or ritual? Um, yeah, I actually, I actually do have quite a weird one, which I'm not, I'm not sure if other people do this as well. I suspect they do, and I thought yeah. I was weird, but I'm not. So it's nothing creepy. One of the things I find myself doing when my mind is wandering is I'll count the the faces of a shape that in, in a thing that I can see. So, for instance, if I'm sitting... What the I'll, fuck? I'll explain what I'm talking about, right? So, let, let's say I'm sitting there on the sofa. <laughs> stop, 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 right. stop, 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 stop. Would you, would you class that a weird habit or is that a ritual? This is how I imagined it, right? P-Flax is there sitting on the sofa, maybe waiting for someone. Maybe he's just finished watching an episode of Dead and he puts it down. And he's just, his eyes glaze over, okay? And in his mind, there's like a fucking complex tetrahedron, okay? It's like really complicated. It's like yeah, spinning it's true. in his head, like a wireframe. And he's like, 70, 78, 9, 9, 12, 12, 6, 7, 7, 7 <laughs> Like Rain times, Man. 6, 60, <laughs> 20, yeah. 20, like 25, 9, 70, 666, definitely 99. Definitely, yeah, definitely 99. definitely And then, he, then it's like, like his that. eyes like, like are blinking really, really fast. And he wakes up and he's like, that was satisfying. He's all like, sweaty he, and he's been strangling his wife in his sleep. <laughs> Honey, you're not an hour. Counting faces, dream. <laughs> he's got his dick in his head. Uh, oh, the shapes. Yeah. <laughs> just covered in jizz. I do it with Shit. text a lot. So, for instance, if there's something on my... If I'm just waiting, rather than just sit, I'll kind of... I don't know why. I, I think my my tiny brain kind of feels a weird need to be occupied. So I'll count. Man, maybe it's like a beautiful mind thing. Like you should start yeah, yeah, writing yeah. some of this stuff on paper right, and but just it's literally not actually, plaster your it, garage it's, walls with But it's not papers. clever. It's like, for instance, I'll see a brand name. Like I'll see the word vitamin. So I'll be counting the the lines in the V. So if I'm looking at the font for this, this V on this bottle of vitamins here, right? So you've got, for a basic V, you've got six faces because you've got the 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 inside and the outside of the left hand bit of the V, the inside and the outside of the right hand bit of the V, and then the top of it is flat. So that's six. Oh yeah, right. But then this font. But what about the bottom of the V? Has that little? Is that sharp? Well, the bottom of the it's V. A corner, so no, it's not it's a corner. No, if it's a point, that's not a face, right? But then at the top of that V, you've then got one of those blocky bits. I don't know what you call it in a font. It's like a little hat on the top. On the left and yeah, the right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I then, know what you mean, yeah. That the, then counts. The top of that is a face. Right. Oh, the bottom bit, the bottom bits count as two faces, right. though, so right? So it's like, so that is five. Each of those is five. Shit. But then you've got the inside. So that's actually a 14, that V, but goes from shit. a six to a 14 just by that. So it, it's like that. I'll just sit there counting that kind of shit just to waste time well, thanks, in my brain. Thanks for that, because now I will also be fucking doing that. I'm sorry. I do that. I do it. Damn it. 
Damn it. What a bizarre thing. I know. Weird, I just, yeah. I've just i always done it. I don't know why. It's just like a tick in my brain. I just do it. I just count the facets of the faces of a font or a word. Mainly words. I, words are numbers. I think I think you are getting into the sort of land of, of sort of creepy kind of psychological like Breakdown. tricks that are really yeah. negative. Yeah, it's like, like onset early dementia or something. No, it's just, it's, yeah. I've done it since I was a kid. It's just a weird habit that I've got. Like It's, just sure, a, it's yeah. like this thing where you say, don't think of a crocodile and... You always think yeah, of a crocodile. You're obsessed over a crocodile. Well, I thought of an alligator because I always get them mixed up. This yeah. is, still, is there a difference? Yes. Yeah. There's, there's certain triggers you shouldn't you should we shouldn't talk about. You All know, right. Crocodiles. It's gonna get people get on people's nerves. All right. Let's, my uh, um, my question. weird oh, habit weird or thing. ritual, yeah, is well, like this happens with me, like in recordings and stuff as well, and I do it all the time. Like not even, not even just like for recordings and stuff, but like when I'm at home too, um, I constantly sort of like sing songs with the wrong lyrics. Like I replace lyrics and songs and and sing songs and stuff. And like now my son does it, and my wife does it quite a bit now. I as do well. that too. Oh. And I've done, I've always done it. I've always done that since I was like a, a little kid. And I always, I'm not sure if a lot of people do that. Yeah, or not, no, I, I, I it's do just that. One of those things we that I've that, just yeah. always done, um, kind of like almost borderline obsessively. As yeah. Well, so like it's know, it's about it's what's happening. Like if I'm making breakfast and a song stuck in my head, rather than sing the song, it, the lyrics yeah, will be about make, what's for breakfast. And my, yeah. my kids love it. Like they think it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I, but I don't know if it's a dad thing because I did it before I was a dad as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, think it's, I don't know. I think it's, it's yeah, I don't do that. No, I think that's a creative thing more than I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily that. I don't, I guess I don't listen to as much music probably either. What about doodling, right? So if you're on the phone or something, what, what's your go-to doodle? A dude shooting a gun. Yeah, I don't like. Dude shooting yeah. a gun. I used to do that in my exercise books at school. My mum brought them all up. The other day, she was like, I had to clear out. I found all your old exercise books from the like the last six years, like your, your six years at school. And it's just pages of, and pages yeah, of this like, dude. I was, of a dude I was really into the movie Aliens yeah. at school. Like that was a big deal at school. So it's mainly dudes shooting aliens. Like that's pretty much. Do you like, still doodle guys shooting aliens when you're on the phone to like your mum or whatever? Well, yeah, I do sometimes. In like an yeah. important business meeting. Is it, does it look like Napoleon Dynamite <laughs> style drawings <laughs> yeah, as well? Like, That's an amazing two one, Pete shit in the top lip. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> That's amazing. Is, do you, what do you, what's your doodle sips? What do Mine, you do? I'm like a line and shape guy. So like I'll, I'll just do like lots of like lines and shapes and then go back over those lines and shapes and like make them. And then sometimes they just turn into buildings and stuff. And other times it just turns into a big mess of like lines and shapes and weird patterns and stuff. Yeah. I do. Um, a little, a little house. I do a little house quite often. I do five pointed stars, which is not, not the, not the Jewish yeah. like simple No, I, I do that sometimes too. I find, you know, I find girls. Girls write their names as doodles. Like okay. I found I found uh, Mrs. F had practiced her new signature before I'd even proposed to her. Like that we'd been going out for a few years and I found really? a piece of paper where she was practicing being Maddie Forsyth and everything. And she'd written it out a bunch of times to see how it looked. And I was like, Wow. She's hooked. She wants the, 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 well, she no, wants it's, the it's almost like do you know what that was? She wants the T Force. <laughs> <laughs> Another one has succumbed to the might of T-Force. I, I said to her, you've spelled this Maddie Force. So it should be Maddie Force. You're, you're M-Force now that you're on. Yeah, you're on Team, Team Force. Force. Well, I, yeah. I'm sure she was embarrassed for you to find that, but I think that she was probably not thinking, not looking forward to marrying you so much as looking forward to seeing how her signature would look if she married you. Okay, because, yeah. you know. Because that can be a big th- turn off for people too. Yeah. Like, this a, does a, not a work for me. This does I mean, not work. You've got to change your whole name. And what if it doesn't work? You know, think about how many men's names. Yeah, think about how easily you could, you know, get your name like, like we were talking about this in the office, the amount of people who've got re- really unfortunate names. Imagine when you marry someone. Like you, Woody Woodcock. Well, more like, you know, well, there's loads of them. I'm not going to give you them. They're all of the all of the flipping jokes from the stream. Um, Billy Strongcock. Yeah. But, but, I did. I, I do routinely ask my wife things that would have been deal breakers early on in our relationship. Okay. Like if my last name had been Cunts. Like the German name, K U N T Z. Yeah. Would she have still married me? Like, and if I had insisted that she keep that or, name. Or Facker, because then yeah, she would Facker. be Maddie Facker. Maddie Facker, yeah. Right? Would, and she probably would say <laughs> no. Maddie Facker. Yeah, Maddie Facker. Maddie Facker, like that. Would you be cool? And I would, I was really proud of the Facker name. Like, 
but you can't change it. You got to keep it. Would you still have married me? And I bet, I guarantee you, she would say probably yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> she would have like signed it a few times on a bit of paper and said, uh, "This no, is no, not going to work." Too much like motherfucker, Marth- Martha Fokker and Gaylord Fokker from that. Yeah, yeah. remember that one? Yeah, I do remember. And that. they even considered it. And she was like, "No, I love this guy so much that I don't care that my name is going to be like a clown name." Just <laughs> change your fucking name. Loads of people do it all the time. Jesus, fucking if you're still that called, shit. Like, just do it when you're drunk one night and rename yourself to like peanut butter everyone toast. Everyone who's or something. called Hitler has renamed themselves, right? There's no Hitlers anymore, is there? I don't think so. so no, there probably Hitler is somewhere to be in Bavaria. Super popular. Some old guy. I will not change the proud Hitler name. I don't. <laughs> See what the fuss is about. Everybody's <laughs> always joking and messing about. I've been Definitely a Hitler German. my whole life. I love it. It's not my fault. I love this style of mustache. I will not change it. Or my name. I don't know what the problem is. I am Hitler. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, shit. Anyway, that went off um, on a massive tangent. Let's have another quick question and then we'll go, okay? Yeah, Ready? Yeah, yeah. All right. Plaid Shirt asks... Do you ever get recognized? If so, what's the best and worst reactions you've had? This one's a weird one. Because, like, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes, like, people recognize me out and about. And they'll be with a group of people, okay? And one person in the group will be like, oh, shit, like, it sips. Like, you know, how you doing? But their friends don't fucking know who I am at all. And yeah, yeah. maybe aren't into games or, or anything like that. And are just super awkward and embarrassed super about the Super duper experience. awkward. And they're just standing around like, who's this like fucking grown ass man that looks <laughs> like old he's guy. been in yeah. jail that you're talking to like out in public. And they're like, oh shit, like I like this thing about this game this one time and everything. And you're like, oh yeah, shit, I love games too. And then all these like three or four other people are just standing there looking at you like you're Hitler. It's, yeah, do you and, know what? It's not the interaction with the fans because man, I love talking to fans in the street. You know, if you see me, I'd much rather you like just said, hey, Lewis. And I'd be like, oh, hey, and we actually, I'd much rather that than you creepily like yeah. taking a picture of me or tweeting me afterwards saying, oh, I saw yeah. Lewis. I didn't know what to say. He was right, eating but- a hot dog and I took a picture of him. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. It's the friends that are always the problem, isn't it? Because well, if, if you're with if a group they, of friends. If they're not just, into like if they're the not, same stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit weird. Yeah. But- but um, sometimes what happens, what, what, what sometimes happens is that someone does that, okay, and then someone else nearby sees you and assumes you're famous and then wants a picture with you even though they don't know who you are. Yeah. So, for example, that's happened a few times and, um, you know, they've, they've tried to get, like, sometimes they do it wrong as well. Sometimes they're like, oh, are they, so this woman, for some reason, wanted me to take a picture of her in Terps, you know, and that couldn't possibly because, you know, he was, like, more famous or, or something. Hello? I, mean, I don't think she knew who either of us were. Hi. Hello. Oh, yeah. Okay. I disconnected there for a second. You, you, missed, you missed nothing. Okay. You missed, you missed nothing. nothing. Another weird one, just on the topic of, of this, is when you meet somebody, uh, somebody who knows who you are, and they're, like, with their parents, who have no fucking idea that, like, this side of the world exists like people playing video games especially when their parents recording are them your and putting, age. yeah yeah <laughs> and then the the look that you get from those parents they're just like what the fuck planet are you from yeah. like they just cannot comprehend that like their kid knows you and that you make money somehow off playing video games like it's just it that that look is so priceless like yeah I love it and every you know time. what that sometimes happens in queues at conferences as well because they've been queuing up for like an hour and a half to meet you and yeah, yeah. Pa- the parents are so mad that their kid has made you wait for an hour and a half that they're that they're, they're really clearly they got this pent-up aggression they're like oh my my daughter's really excited to meet you but i think you're shite i fucking hate you you <laughs> cunt you fucking made me queue up here for fucking I don't know two if it's hours. Ever you that fucking bad. bastard! I hate you. <laughs> That's why we she have listens Kev. to you all the time. I can't stand you. I don't think you're funny at all. Fuck you. Pretty harsh. Oh, Sometimes that has happened. Almost like this. This guy spitting with rage, kind of that. That he's had. To, I had like, like a, a lady come up to me one time, and it was the opposite. Like the kid had like obviously just grown up and and moved on past liking my YouTube videos. 
Uh, but like the mom was like, oh, you know, we, we found out you were here and I just wanted to come and say hi because my son used to watch your videos a couple of years ago. And I, I felt like I just had another son in the room. I could always hear your voice and stuff. Oh. And like the kid just looks like so fucking uninterested. But the mom is like all over it. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, this is kind of weird. But at the same I time, I sort of it's expect kinda... our audience to, because we obviously had quite a young audience with Minecraft. And I sort of expected what they would happen was they would they would grow out of us, right? And we would be uncool, okay? Yeah. When they were like 14, 15, 16, 17. Then they'd come back to us when they were like 18 or 19 again and be like, actually, you know, I don't care. Uh, you know, I think there's this this at this at this age group when I was certainly young, when anything that was popular was uncool kind of automatically. And, and it was kind of quite reasonless often. It was quite kind of vague and it didn't necessarily have a lot of backing behind it as to what was it was things things weren't so much good or bad mm. as cool or not cool man i don't know yeah it's tough it's tough being a, a, a hormonal 15 year old I, I don't yeah so if you're if those you're, hormones are circulating you know you're growing hair in places that you've never had hair before and you're confused and if you need to reach out and speak to everybody seven times a day, phone lewis on his mobile phone it's uh one two three nine five two nine six two five he's always there ready to listen and help you through those tough times sure yeah <laughs> and, but more seriously if you do have some tough times there are other phone numbers you can call who are for instance Perian for Flax's phone number, which is five three two nine nine eight five six two three nine. Nice through seven eleven t sixty eleven t one z yeah twelve t. I've been recognised a couple of times. Nowhere near as many of you guys have, but it's always, it's, it's been really disconcerting when it's happened because it's been when I'm out and about. It's, it's just like a random thing that's happened. Never like hey. um Hey, are you the Google Maps flasher? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I recognized they you. They said they were gonna blur my face. <laughs> oh shit. Oh man. That's hilarious. Fuck me. Did well, you guys see that the tweet there was like um it's like Google Maps managed to capture uh, a woman falling off a horse because the Google Maps van frightened the horse into a ditch <laughs> oh my God. And, and like ejected this woman from the back of the horse and so like if you follow the road it was like in norway or something so like if you follow the road up and you see the freeze frames of the images there's like just like this animation of a woman falling <laughs> off a horse oh, like, it's like one of those oh, flip books. yeah it's it, like just when you thought that like you'd reach the pinnacle of funny shit that happens on the google maps street view pictures like the dude you know really awkwardly walking into the strip club and, and shit like that <laughs> fucking woman off the horse falling off the horse comes along and just like i like the, the redefines the, 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 the goat, whole thing the goat that clearly got hit by the google maps car like you can see it in one shot and then the next <laughs> shot if you look at the reverse there's a dead goat in the road <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, it's just amazing oh shit that's hilarious Oh, shit. Right. Well, let's let's leave it there. Thank you, everyone, for those questions. Thank you for listening to the Trifles podcast. Hope you have a lovely day. Uh, think about your dad and then yeah. and, and the kind stuff. of things that your dad does. And what does he like to do and what does he smell like? Yeah. Think about those things. And uh, think about those things. Yeah. Uh, lick a farting ass. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Lick a farting ass. <laughs> That's a Zen question. Yeah.